and jitendra i am the host of uh, today's webinar we will be presenting the showcase of uh, one demo uh, related to iot gateway i i am the founder of has studio technology has studio is a leading iot development company we develop custom iot solution for our customers we have expertise in hardware firmware cloud mobility and i with me uh, we have kulbushan who is a iot lead at has studio technology he is the architect and designer of uh, this iot gateway which is designed by has studio technology he will be giving a demo of the product and then discussing the use case of the uh, this product and later on we will be do, be having a qa session so i will pass it to kulbushan uh, for introduction about this device and then uh, give a uh, walk through it uh, say for a demo so hello everyone uh, kulbushan the side from hash studios so basically this project product that we have developed is for industrial automation conforming to the uh, industry 4.0 standards so uh, moving on to the standards so industry 4.0 standard is all about connecting all the devices that can that can be uh, controlled remotely and then can that can be used to provide data to a central control system so what we are doing now is uh, we are collecting data from machines or we are controlling machines using the mqtt protocol which is one of the most widely used protocols in the market we are transmitting all the data and we are controlling all the data parameters from from plcs to uh, energy meters to customized sensors and stuff we are generating all this data from the sensors and transmitting it on to a dashboard platform using mqtt there are several uh, transport uh, protocols available which are used for transmitting data from one part of the uh, factory to a central console we have uh, nvdt is one of the best contenders in all these protocols we have http rest apis we have coap protocols we have web sockets web sockets are uh, very good things uh, if you talk about uh, real time data processing and transmission or web meetings such as this one might be using websocket in the back end we have amqp uh, transmission we have xmpp uh, transmission one of the most industry uh, utilized is opc ua which is a unified architecture over the opc uh, in, uh, protocol that we have in the industry so we have you are talking about that these uh, uh, protocols are available mm -hmm. so do you want to say that in this uh, iot gateway all of these protocol are available no actually we are currently supporting mqtt out of the box and on on request we can provide http as well as web socket but again uh, in the industry since more more and more people are uh, bent on using mqtt because it's real time it can be stored and like the, the flexibility with mqtt is quite large so we are currently uh, shipping it out of the box with the mqtt protocol Obviously. and uh, since the controllability of these devices in mqtt is great so i prefer security in the industry when you are uh, uh, talking about a remotely configurable and controllable device okay so carrying on uh, mqtt is the transmission protocol but when we talk about data we are mostly talking about uh, either the data is being collected or generated or uh, transmitted through uh, rs485 or rs232 rs232 is your uh, specific uart protocol and rs485 is your industrial modbus protocol in which a two line pair is used to transmit data for about 1.2 kilometers on the same channel connecting up to 255 slaves uh, that can be pulled uh, that uh, transmission medium is a single uh, what do you call it uh, it's it's not full duplex it's half duplex and the half duplex meaning that one device in the network speaks and the uh, it waits for the respective devices to respond back. So the communication happens in serialized form so that each slave is being pulled for, uh, again and again mm -hmm. for their data. Or suppose there is a specific event, then that uh, particular device can raise its hand on the network and can transmit the data, uh, breaking the queue and so on and so forth. OK. So for our audience, I guess uh, they would be interested what is Modbus and how it is uh, useful for the communication. So Modbus is an implementation of our uh, RS485 protocol. So what happens is in RS485, the data transmission is uh, 
generated by the help of uh, the the uh, delta in the signals i mean the signals are mirrored on both this uh, side so that the zero and one can be differentiated between a voltage range of uh, about 1.8 volts to a wide average variety like 12 volts depending upon the type of wire used basically uh, giving us half duplex communication is just to provide a foolproof communication and also when you talk about modbus since the device and the data are uh, like uh, crucial and critical so there is always a crc bit attached at the back of the packet so that you can identify whether anything has gone bad in the, in the transmission or not all right all right so maybe we can proceed with the uh, some use cases in the demo of the device sure uh, just before the demo i would like to uh, explain something more about these modbus devices and how these devices and iot gateways that we are developing are going to help the industry so the device that we have developed can be uh, controlled remotely so like uh, the devices that are available on the market are generally controllable from the device uh, until it cannot be uh, like altered the uh, uh, the parameters cannot be altered unless you, and until you have the device at hand but our devices the way that we have designed them can be controlled over a control channel on mqtt at any place you like so like suppose uh, i am sitting here in noida in my office i want to have a device change its parameter suppose i have a device uh, this is one of our gateways suppose i have this gateway and ha i have this connected in mumbai in some uh, energy meter in a factory where i am measuring the voltage suppose i have changed the meter i move from uh, schneider from the select meter so these two meters have completely different uh, register set and the values that are giving they are giving on each register set so i don't have to send somebody over to do the programming again in that gateway i all i can do is i can just change the configurations from here transmit it onto the network and the device will accept that trans transmission reboot itself and that start throwing and start getting and throwing the data on the different changed para parameters okay but how is it different from the firmware uh, upgrade like same thing i can achieve i can uh, uh, do the reconfiguration of the parameters release new version and then uh, over the year we can upgrade the firmware of the device and then the device will reboot and uh, adjust uh, according to the new, new parameters see generally ota takes time ota takes a larger amount of uh, data uh, bandwidth ota ota has a, a significant size of in ranges in ranging in a few hundred M, uh, kbs or or up to a few mbs but these messages that we are the control signals that we are sending onto the network are merely 1 kilobyte in size so if you are on a, a m2m sim or a m2m data plan the data size matters to you you cannot have an entire bandwidth consume just for an ot update so keeping these things in mind the database uh, the the device that we have developed is optimizing the data usage as well as it is uh, taking in uh, keeping in mind all these automation parameters okay understood uh, so, so concluding this that uh, we can remotely configure the device without upgrading the firmware right. so that is the beauty of uh, this device so if i need to change one parameter considering that i want to add one more register which i want to read so i need not to do it, go through the pota Right. Uh, major, uh, managing the firmware version, releasing it on the cloud, and then it, a device will download the firmware and reconfigure it. Instead, I can just same single command to uh, change the number of registers Absolutely. or the value of the register. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So, uh, what would you like to do? Uh, demo of the product, or you want yeah. to discuss uh, some use cases uh, around this? So let's. Quick, do a quick demonstration first. I will show you the data coming through, and then I'll show you how do I change the data that is coming through. I'll be using the data sheets as well. So, just uh, let, let's start. I'm just sharing my screen now. So we have done some setup here. We uh, we have placed one IoT device with uh, two MFM MFM device. One is of the Schneider company, second is of the Slack, uh, Slack 
and uh, we will use a, a slave multi-slave configuration to read the data simultaneously from both the energy meters so that will be our uh, demo as a part of this webinar so it's just starting now so uh So as you can see on my screen, there is a data coming through from one of the energy meters from select. So just let me clear the screen and let's show you the messages. So yes, so we have uh, data from three voltage sources coming. Only one is connected, so we are getting a current voltage source. You can see in the image the voltage that is coming and the voltage that is coming in the data set itself. So very high precise data that is coming through the gateway. So what we're doing is currently we are configured in the select meter, this particular version, we are configured to read the three voltages. We are, con we are configured to read the, uh, read the V1, V2, 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 V3, V3, V4, uh, V3, V1 uh, voltages, their combination. And then we are doing the three current consumption parameters. So maybe I think, uh, Kulbushan, we can explain that what is this configurator screen? What is that? Uh, sure, I, uh, I'll, I'll do that. Just let me explain the data that I okay. have been showing. So because uh, audience might not understand this. Uh, sure. So you need to explain uh, what is this uh, MQTT X? Uh, what is this configurator? So we'll be able yeah. to, uh, being uh, a known tech guy, I'm not able to, to understand this. So you need to help me. Sure. Let me start with that. So, uh, okay. So talking about MQTT, since these devices are communicating over MQTT and are capable of communicating over SSL, OSSL, and non-SSL type of MQTT uh, gateways. So this currently we have an SSL gateway. We have uh, this configured or on this on AWS, and we are currently getting a, a round trip time of about uh, 300 millisecond from from the service provider from the device to the network and back. So currently my device is configured to send a message every second and we are collecting about 13 parameters including the voltages, the uh, triangular voltages, the current consumption and the power consumption of all these devices. Also we are having uh, consider consideration the frequency of the AC voltage that we are having, right? So let's start with the configuration screen. This is the configurator that we have developed for our devices. Configurator keeps in mind the different parameters that are need to be configured onto a device. Uh, let's explain this from the top. So we have the slave ID configuration. This can be configured for each of the device to work with this device. Suppose we are having uh, seven slaves, suppose I want to configure each slave onto the network and connect from this device and transport all their data and their respective parameters to the end device, we can do so. Suppose this select meter that we have connected here is having slave ID 16, right? So I have configured the five register sets on this device. The first three are uh, measuring the voltages. And these addresses are like 30,000, 30,001 for V1, 30,001 to 30,000, uh, sorry, 30,002, 30,003 for uh, V2, 30,004, 30,005 for V3 and so on and so forth. So this is purely from the data sheet, no mathematics here. Just you need to take in uh, consideration the function that you have to use. Uh, that is whether you are using the uh, holding registers or you're using the input registers. This depends from device to device, whether you're using the holding registers or the uh, input registers. So currently we are doing the holding registers. Okay. So you mean uh, once the user get this device, so you will be supplying this configurator application. Yes. And with the help of this configurator application, user will be able to configure the register which they want to read from energy meter or right. other devices through mode bus. 
right so that now, is the purpose of this configurator right. not right. only the energy meter you talk about any meter that is capable of communicating over modbus rs485 so oh, my mistake i thought these are this is capable of no, reading no, no. energy meter only but it can read any modbus yes. uh, enable yes. device even okay. you can uh, even you can ask for a firmware version that has the transparent capability so that you can control plcs as well so there is no limitation as to what kind of uh, precision control we can provide you through these devices okay so, so for this, this uh, device comes with the a configurator application which gives a provision to configure the a number of uh, resistors with kind of function and some other features are there that uh, mqtd connection configuration published topics slaves uh, configurations so coming to slave this device uh, support multi slave functionality can yes. you explain that in detail yes actually this device currently supports current concurrent uh, data extraction and uh, pushing to five slaves so we can uh, we can put configurations for up to five slaves in this particular device and it will pull data at a minimum uh, sampling rate of uh, 500 milliseconds but again if you are doing 500 milliseconds and doing five slaves don't expect it every 500 milliseconds because it will eventually take time and depending upon the length of the wire and the length of the network rs five network it will take time so again uh okay one so or two mean, seconds. Uh, this device currently connected with two energy meters right so this is slave one uh this so device is, this energy meter is slave two right. and uh similarly i can add slave three slave yeah. four slave five right. so this is a uh, so one de device simultaneously reading from multiple mode bus enabled devices. Right. So this is called as a multi-slave multi functionality. Yes. Okay. So as you can note that I have written this as slave one. So this is for just my uh, consideration and what kind of, what what uh, slave ID I'm assigning to this particular readings, not the exactly same slave ID from the device. Okay. So that we have defined here. Also, we can define different baud rates and form frame formats for each of these devices. We can uh, specify uh, a security URL. In my case, it is it's uh, is my it's not a public broker, guys. <laughs> so this is my um, security broker, and it's communicating on uh, eight 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 three. User ID password. Uh, I come back to that later. <laughs> So we can do a subscribe topic here. This would be our control channel. So this would be my standard uh, control channel. That is the subscribe channel on which I will be sending the commands over to the device. Suppose I need to uh, do, okay, again, let's come back to this data first and I'll show you the changes that I have done. So on this particular channel, we are not having any frequency data. Right. We are having all the voltage data and the remaining channels are zero. Right. So let's take an example of this. NHC 7 is coming zero, 8 is coming zero. Right. So you want uh, that you will configure it so that these values start coming. Right. Please do it. Uh, configurator, I guess. Configurator, yes. So frequencies around function four, and just. Just uh, for the audience, so Kulbushan is going to the do the configuration. Uh, he is going to change some registers, uh, which we will be reading from Slack. So at the screen currently, you can see the configurator screen. So there are some registers. 
values he has uh, put is going to change those values and then try to read the frequency uh, from the select uh, meter so currently he is uh, going through the data sheets which is supplied by select that uh, so this where you have put this is uh, corresponding to your frequency so we'll start uh, on the 13 parameter we should start seeing the value of frequency here so what i'm doing is i'm just creating a uh, modbus J configuration json from for my particular device and i'll be transmitting that data onto the hash sub channel that i currently um configured to use right so these parameters that are generated i'll be transmitting it onto a device and we'll see the device has stopped responding device is rebooting so there is no update on these channels no new data is coming through the device is rebooting and ex accepting uh, the new configuration that we have sent to it Again, the device is rebooted. So you mean to say that we will get the yes. data with the new configuration. So I guess NS13 is uh, 1939. There was no value no, in this field yeah. earlier. Maybe uh, you can zoom and uh, show it to the yes. audience. Yeah, I just made a boo-boo. So this is, again, uh, this is, uh, sorry, a two-digit, uh, sorry. This is a two point. This was a two point float okay. value which I forgot. So guys, again, that was my mistake. I didn't select the two byte floats format. So this was a this was a thirty two bit value, uh, sixteen bit value, and I needed to get that value uh, onto the system. So just so you will the, be reconfiguring the device. Yes, right? I'll be reconfiguring the device so that I'm getting a readable value here. Okay. So device will stop uh, responding, then it will uh, yeah. restart yeah, and then uh, reconfigure uh, itself with the new value. Yeah, you can see here that we are getting an absurd value here just because it was a float value and we're not getting that conversion. So once that but we can see that there was no value coming earlier on the NSS yes. CH13, and now, uh, it now it is started coming. So that is the difference I could see NSC 13 uh, values change. Okay. So maybe you can do some uh, zoom uh, uh, on this once it is uh, readable. Sure, sure. Uh, let me show you how can I make this more readable. Okay, I'll show you the data. So it's not okay. So this is a way to change the uh, configuration of the device. So instead of uh, sending the firmware, we send the message to the device that this is the new configuration I want to read. So there will be two so channels. One you will see be... on the 13 channel, we have started getting the frequency data. Great. From the device. So, so all these. Maybe you can zoom it uh, and show it. Uh, uh, maybe do control plus uh, something like so that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can. Is it visible now? Better. Again, so we can see here the data has started coming and I'm getting the frequency also output here. This 50.06, uh, yeah. right? So, so we can confirm this from the meter itself uh, that the data is uh, correct. Just let me get to that page first. Yeah, this is a value we can see that yeah, in the frequency. Uh, guys, you can see this uh, values on the select meter uh, 50.08 was the value of the frequency same we are reading it uh, through the mode bus and then sending it to the cloud through the MQTT connection and what we have done we have not uh, upgraded any firmware we just send the message to the device to reconfigure on the control channel so there are two channels one is data channel and second is control channel data no, channel. actually there are uh, five data channels for one for each device 
Okay. So, so five outgoing data channels and one incoming data channel, one for each device. So we can say that there are two channels. One is for uh, right. configuration and second is for sending and receiving the data. And for each slave, there will be a different data channel. Yes. Correct me if I'm For wrong. each slave, there will be a different data channel. If you can see, there is the other meter that is connected here. It is reporting data on dev three as well. Okay. So the other meter that we have connected is connected on dev three and we are getting data out of it. So this is a different configuration that I'm seeing. See the difference is here is like on NCH 13, we have no data element here. Just because it was not, it was not uh, programmed to give that data element. So what we can do is we can uh, try to change this data as well. But again, it would be the same task that we have done earlier. Just changing the slave ID and stuff like that. So I guess uh, we can discuss some use cases and then pass it to the for the QA because we are running out, out of time. There are only twelve minutes left. So oh yes. So uh, do we have any questions? So we will be taking a, a question. Uh, one of our uh, viewer has asked. Could you show us how to set the SSL certificate in your gateway so that it could not it could send the data via MQTTS own port 8883 with SSL? So again, uh, setting uh, the demonstration of this would be difficult because SSL certificates onto the device. If you want to configure, you have to place a request with us because SSL certificates are a part of the firmware. Uh, the SSL certificate should not be shared so that. We are maintaining this and we are adding it as a part of the firmware so that it's not extractable or deliverable. So whenever you want to get a SSL certificate inserted into this device, you need to contact us. And we would be addressing this in a bulk query only. Uh, in so Michael, uh, current demo was over the SSL, but it was a different SSL without file. Uh, it was uh, using username uh, and password. Uh, uh, authentication on the SSL was uh, related to username and password, not key base. But we can uh, do it uh, using SSL uh, key base values. That key will be stored in the device, but uh, that cannot we cannot uh, show. But we can take this query offline and show a different demo. Right, absolutely. Because see, again, SSL keys when you're talking about is a uh, rather delicate matter. And we cannot. Yeah. And might be we were underprepared for uh, taking this query. Otherwise, we would have taken, we would have some uh, SSL file handy and we would have shown you. Maybe we can pass it to the next question uh, in case anyone has the next question. See, actually, this is for all machines. Uh, let me read the question. So, question from the viewer was Is this for CNC machines or for all machine reads? Yes, so uh, sorry for skipping the question part. Uh, see, this is for any machine that can communicate over RS-485 Modbus. Be it a PLC, be it a, be it a temperature sensor, be it a, any XYZ machine, be it uh, some laser sensor or this stuff like that, it can, it can give you messages over impurity. You need to have the... Uh, data sheet of the particular machine so that you are able to uh, correct it, uh, configure it correctly. In fact, for one of uh, our client, he is uh, using this device to read the temperature sensor and humidity uh, data right. from the right. sensor. Right. They are, in fact, not machines, but those sensors are uh, mode bus enabled sensors. Right. So uh, actually, the use cases in a cold storage part where you have to measure uh, temperature at certain points of the entire plant and they're doing that network daisy chain network of the devices and it to a single gateway. Thanks Kumar for asking this question. Maybe we can uh, take it offline and show you the demo of uh, other than CNC machines. Uh, next question please. Uh, in case any uh, known tech query or technical query, please feel free to ask. Uh, uh, we'll be happy to answer. Uh, 
question is this is a subscription module or one time setup so uh, i guess uh, i will not pass this question to good question i will answer this so th there are two model one is uh, where you will be uh, procuring this device uh, and then doing a setup of your own uh, cloud and uh, web application cloud application where the data will be sent so that will be a one time setup in case you are interested we set up for uh, you the cloud part and uh, a web application from dashboard needs to be created then it will be a subscription uh, module i guess uh, uh, i answered kumar uh, maybe we can take next question from the audience thanks kumar maybe uh, i have one question for you kulbushan in case uh, oh, what is the cost of installing this device thanks shalin for this question so uh, cost part we will be discussing offline so this starts with the range of 5000 rupees it has a different version it goes up to 15000 rupees uh, we uh, deliver this device with the manuals for installation uh, in case some customization is required uh posting uh posting can be discussed offline and uh one thing which we which we miss there are some variants of this device so which maybe you can explain what are the different variants we have for so this again uh if you talk about variants so we have this device working in impurity we have this device working with uh your http https rest api and we can also do soap or xml ns okay. so i is... was talking about that uh inputs like currently is okay, working sorry. only with uh, r45 yeah. so you wanted uh, the hardware only so again so this is one of the gateways that we are doing that is just the modbus one we have uh, in the line we have coming one with uh, five uh, analog inputs uh, sorry five digital inputs and now we have uh, one coming up with 10 uh, digital inputs also we are uh, in process of making with uh, 10 uh, potential free outputs so again, uh, the controllability of these devices and the variants that we're looking onto is a, a large uh, number. And like, the, based upon your you people's requirement, we'll be building it and taking it to any extent. So, what possible. is the difference between uh, a input-based device and output-based device? So, so you said that this is one is RS485, and then there can be five more analog input. Yes. And so then one with five analog output yes by that what is the difference uh, between these two devices so by that i want to uh, wanted to mention that this uh, modbus is a communication protocol rs is a communication protocol if we want to take up to five or ten digital or analog inputs into the system and transfer that also onto a server or a dashboard we can do so all right that is the requirement for alarming system suppose you have a fire alarm that can give you a modbus signal as well as a trigger on one of the pins so what we can take is modbus will take time it the message and the query will be done once the time of that slave comes but again if there is an emergency a trigger i can just take it into my system transmit as an emergency and purity message and that would be delivered to the dashboard almost in real time the question is can you give a use case where both the five inputs and five outs are, yes, are required? Yes, I, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. The most uh, the most useful uh, use case that we can think of is in a production machine. Where suppose you have a molding machine, right? Every time there is a mold, uh, the, the the two molds are pressed, and the uh, substrate is injected into the module. You can use that particular input at that point to get notified of each time the mold is pressed and the, the total production amount you can take care of we had a product uh, previously that is called uh, uh, countermatic which was used to do this particular task but again if you are using our one of these devices you can remove that devices you can remove uh, these dev those devices from about 10 devices and you can collect all those data onto one platform from this one uh, particular gateway okay so uh, I'll pass it to the audience in case they don't have the question. I have a few questions for you. So anyone uh, from the viewers uh, want to ask anything? 
I guess uh, uh, we don't have any further queries. So maybe you can tell us about the casing. Is it uh, uh, industrial grade or what grade it is? And then something about the certification. What what is the different certification this device supports? So this device is currently in an electromagnetic shielded case. So there would be no magnetic or electrical, uh, what do you call it, interference onto this module. This module is 1.5 kilovolt uh, uh, spark gap tested so that uh, almost uh, statically safe, if you call it, any static that is coming onto the line and also that won't be transmitted uh, or it, it will be mitigated on the point. So like, uh, and if you're talking about certifications, uh, we do have uh, FCC and uh, EU certifications. But again, if you want additional certifications, we can get it done for you. Okay, so that means uh, custom certification is required, then uh, uh, we'll be able to deliver with that. Uh, right, again, uh, that depends upon the industrial devices, whatever they require, we have that those certifications and uh, we can do that. But uh, if you require any specific certifications for your industry or you, for your country, you can get that done. Okay. And how about uh, cloud part? Like if somebody does not have the cloud, uh, this device still will be useful for those guys? Uh, you can use, you have to use a cloud service. Right. So has Studio can help in this in case somebody wants us to set up the cloud part, setting up the MQTD broker, uh, creating a web dashboard. So we do trunky project where we don't, do not only uh, deliver the device, but end to end custom solutions. So such kind of dashboards we can build uh, where two way communication is possible. So I'll show you an example of a dashboard. Uh, one of the services that we are currently providing to some of our customers. So this uh just a second uh, so this is one of the implementations that we have built so customize fully customizable dashboard and you can get suppose this particular one is for taking the data from the energy meter itself not uh, many parameters are on this board but again we have multiple dashboards for multiple things that we can measure we have uh, spring manufacturer will show you one okay so uh can you tell about the this making in india package uh you have marked, yes. marked on the my favorite topic so again, uh, since we are uh, registered as a startup company and the Government of India Make in India initiative, so we have this Make in India. So this device is completely made in India, end to end, uh, uh, housing is made in India. This, uh, there is a PCB inside this device that is also made in India. So we are uh, claiming it to be made in India, maybe some uh, components which are not available in India, but uh, that might be procured, but overall the, uh, this is designed, developed and manufactured in India. Right. This is not a Chinese product, it's an Indian product. And the advantage is that we can customize the firmware as the requirement, as per the requirement of the customers. So I guess uh, uh, we are done. Uh, hope We hope uh, this session was useful for you. You guys, uh, in case any queries are there or any uh, opportunities there for us to discuss it uh, in detail, we will be happy to take these queries offline. And once again, thanks to everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank thanks. you so much for joining. It was really exciting. Thanks to for uh, joining this webinar. And this uh, content will be available to you guys uh, over the YouTube or uh, uh, my team will share the details with you. Okay, thank, thank you guys. Thank you.